Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about why I think Donald Trump won this election. We already know how he won it. He improved across almost every demographic, especially Hispanic voters, and he swept all the swing states. But why did he sweep them? Well, I think there's a number of reasons. Some of them are going to be on policy, and some of them are going to be on personality. You could have a reductive and what I would argue is the incorrect answer, and that is just going to be racism or bigotry, etc. But if anything, I think he much more transcended race and identity and created a much more class-based backlash to the establishment. Well, this is going to be another audio slash podcast video. Now, I already did a video on why Harris lost the election, so that's the other side of this coin. And if Trump happened to lose, it would have been easy to come up with reasons why he did. We've been hearing about him pretty much all the time from most mainstream media outlets. But let's go through some of these reasons. And the simplest way to put it, I think, is just going to be change. We've all seen the polls that ask if we're headed in the right direction. And usually, overwhelmingly, people say, no, we're headed on the wrong track. So if 65, 70, maybe 75 percent of people People think we're going down the wrong path. In that sense, it seems easy as to why we didn't continue with the Biden or Harris administration. I think it's similar during COVID. Biden squeaked out a win there because that was a time of serious uncertainty. There were recent lockdowns and national unrest. People were scared. They didn't know what was happening. There were a lot of deaths. Biden came in as the guy who was going to make everything normal again. But now over those four years, a lot of people look back at the Trump years pre-COVID and they think their lives were just better off. You might disagree and you might be right on a couple of different metrics. But the bottom line is a lot of people are just not at all satisfied with the way things are going. So Harris is an extension of the Biden administration. And we all saw how she had issues trying to articulate how she was different from Biden. So I think a lot of people were looking for some change. And the biggest reasons, of course, are going to be that inflation, cost of living, and then immigration and the border. And as I said, Trump does have a track record. And at least pre-COVID, a lot of people remember those lower prices and having a little bit more affordability. I've said it before, but I think the pandemic both cost Trump the election in 2020. And the lingering inflation from that pandemic might have also brought him back into office here in 2024. So everybody knows about cost of living. Now on the immigration side, that's also not really a big mystery. There's been an influx of migrants, illegal immigrants, however you want to put it. And maybe you think it's too harsh, but Trump at least positions himself as being somebody who is strongly opposed to illegal immigration and pro-U.S. citizen. Now you might talk about the bipartisan border bill from the summer, but what I think is a lot of Americans view that as too little to late. When Biden came into office, he did a lot with executive orders that might have set in motion some of these problems we've seen at the border. So the average person might look at that and say, you kind of created this mess, even if Trump helped derail that bipartisan bill. Why should he have to clean up your mess? Now, you might not agree with that. There might be a little bit more nuance to it. But that general sentiment is what I think enough voters are thinking, especially in the swing states. So immigration, I do think, ties into Trump's America first agenda. Now, who knows what he's actually going to do? But again, I think the average voter and the average swing state, they see a lot of non-citizens that have come here. Even if they're minding their own business, they are going to take up some more resources. They might be getting government benefits. There could easily be language barriers or some cultural tensions. And if you have enough of those people coming over, I think a lot of citizens might look at that and say, hey, we've got a lot of problems going on here with our own people. So it's not just purely about crime, but I do think that does matter for a lot of people. They don't want to see anybody that's not actually a U.S. citizen getting ahead of any lines or getting anything that they're not already getting themselves. And that could be with immigration or internet nationally in a place like Ukraine. On a small scale, I don't think it's a huge deal for a lot of people. But if it starts to become a bigger and a bigger issue, and it seems like it's unchecked, and it seems like the answer from the people in power is it's not that big of a deal, or you're a xenophobe, then I think they're going to look elsewhere. And that's where Trump comes in. Now, Trump could go too far in the other direction. That's entirely possible. If that happens, then I'm sure we're going to see some backlash. But I think it went too far in the one direction. And that's where Trump presented himself as the alternative. I think moderation is key with everything. And most Americans, are fairly welcoming, but they do want to see themselves and their own communities get the highest priority over anybody else. Now, a related reason that I think Trump won, in addition to him being the change candidate, is he's going to shake things up. Now, you can view that two ways. If you hate Trump, you're going to view that completely in a negative light. You're going to talk about authoritarianism and racism, tearing down government institutions and having unchecked power. But if you view him shaking it up in a positive light, then you might say, hey, I don't exactly endorse everything he says. In fact, some of it I'm against, but my life is not going that well. My family's life is not going that well. I want somebody to get in there and do something different. Now, most people aren't going to root for him to tear everything down, but they do not want the status quo. And Trump at least talks up a big game about draining the swamp, being anti-establishment, and not doing the exact same thing over and over and over. So even if he ends up being much more corporate friendly than people would like, it seems like he's at least willing to do things that a typical establishment politician would not want to touch. So I think some people are willing to say that there might be some bad that comes 
comes along with the good, but they're willing to roll the dice just to see what happens. Now, the last major reason I'm going to mention as to why I think Trump won is going to be his cultural appeal. Now, a lot of people are repulsed by the way he presents himself and a lot of the things he said, some of his comments. And I think even the people that really like him will agree that he's gone a little bit too far at least a couple of times. They're not exactly a fan of every single thing he says. But his bigger picture appeal is he's a big middle finger to the gatekeepers of the cultural establishment. I think there's a lot of establishment Democrats and liberals. They're in their own bubble. They don't understand the other side. They don't understand how they're alienating half the country. They are quick to jump to a lot of disparaging answers such as racism or sexism, bigotry, etc. And if that's the only answer they can ever come up with, then I don't think they're ever going to be able to bridge the divide between the cultural elite and the rest of the population. Most cultural conservatives are libertarians. I think view the establishment liberal ideology as dominating many of the national institutions such as academia and Hollywood. Conservatives are many times people just in the middle that don't toe that party line. They feel like they're outcasts. There's a million different issues out there such as crime. A lot of people think liberals or Democrats are too soft on it. On any trans issues, they think there should be a fair and robust discussion about both sides. And they think they're not allowed to push back or speak up on it at all or they're going to be labeled a bigot. They're tired of having identity injected into every aspect of life. They don't want to hear about group power dynamics. They don't want to hear about how almost everybody from the past and many people today are a racist. There are a lot of things you could say about this, but once you add them all up, Donald Trump, I think, best represents that kind of cultural pushback. He doesn't show a kind of weakness we might expect with someone like Mitt Romney. He doesn't apologize. He's always doubling down, sometimes when he should not. That's true. But some of Donald Trump's excesses are frequently overlooked because he does have confidence. He does speak plainly. And even though he's really wealthy, he does seem to be able to connect on a cultural level. It's going to be with just your average person walking down the street, the blue collar working class person. And I think a lot of people find that to be refreshing. Not every time. There's definitely times Trump goes overboard and it's going to be indefensible for even those people who voted for him. But constantly hearing every minute of the day how Trump is a danger and a bigot and a threat to democracy. He's a fascist and a misogynist, etc. That really gets old for a lot of people. They think he's going to shake things up. They do do like some of his policy positions. They saw him in office once. They think they're willing to trust him again because their lives are just not really all that satisfying. And that's why they're willing to vote for him, even though I think they agree that he has some flaws. They just might think Harris has even more flaws, or they might just be single issue voters. So even if his weakness might be a topic like abortion, Trump is somehow able to power through pretty much every weakness and every controversy. We saw the indictments. We saw the conviction. We saw him try to get kicked off the ballot. We saw the assassination attempts. There's going to be a good chunk of people who viewed him as a serious underdog. And now that he won, they're going to think that he's a hero. He really did defy the odds, whether you love him or whether you hate him. And I don't really think he has all the answers, but I think he might have some on some issues. Certainly enough for enough voters to be willing to give him a second chance. Now, I do think someone like Bernie Sanders in 2016 might have had a similar path as Trump if he were able to win that nomination. So I would like to see something similar happen with the Democrats because I think their strength is going to be more on populist economics. Trump is going to be more on the populist cultural side. I think if you combine both of those, that would seriously upset the establishment. But now we've got Trump in there yet again. Some people cannot understand it at all, but I usually can try to look at both sides and figure out what might be motivating people to support him. I don't understand the people that say they cannot understand why somebody would vote for one side or the other. If Harris got in there, I could understand why she might win. Trump has issues. He has baggage. It's not impossible for me to understand why people would not support him. But now that he's coming back, I can absolutely understand why people did support him. If he does a bad job, they're going to punish him in the midterms. But I'm not holding my breath on the media treatment. But to be fair, I do think they would do the same thing if it was Bernie Sanders in there. It's very tough to go up against that establishment. And we're going to see what happens. But those are a few of the reasons why I think Donald Trump was able to win this election. Of course, in my other video, I went into why Harris lost. There's a lot of different reasons. It's complicated. But that's my understanding on why this election was won or lost. So let me know in the comments, why do you think Donald Trump won this election? Is it as simple as immigration or inflation? Do you think he did not win it and Harris lost it? Or do you agree that there's a lot more nuance to his cultural appeal. Let me know down below on your way out. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And join if you'd like to support the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.